Okay. So the final section um, is technology, right? So we're gonna talk about how do we detect, how do we measure uh, DNA methylation? Um, this is genomics and bioinformatics. So I'm actually going back to the very, you know, the old ways of doing genomics. The interesting thing is, you know, we actually, most of the current day genomics is based on old molecular biology and, uh, and biochemistry, except we have very different ways of reading out the, uh, the, the, um, the, the output, right? So this is, this is really how people did genomics back then. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you this, this, this experiment called restriction landmark genome scanning, right? So it turns out that there are restriction enzymes uh, that are sensitive to DNA methylation. For example, not one recognize a motif, CCCC, GGGG, right? But it only cuts when the middle CG is unmethylated. When the middle CG is methylated, it does not cut, right? So taking advantage of this, if you digest the genome with not one, if the site is unmethylated, then you ended up with this cutting, right? You can label the end of the, 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 the DNA chromosome, right? And you can run this DNA on a two-dimensional gel, and you'll be able to see these two dots representing these two fragments, okay? If one allele is unmethylated, but the other allele is methylated, you can uh, you, you, you only cut one allele, the other allele is intact, right? You can still label this and you're gonna see the same two dots, but smaller, right? So, cause you only have the half of the signal. In contrast, if the both alleles are methylated, you lose these two dots, right? So this is the old ways of genomics. You're scanning the genome uh, for regions uh, that are either methylated or unmethylated, right? Uh, this is again old days. That's how people do genomics. You run this 2D gel. Now you can compare uh, normal and tumor, and you see, hey, I see that digestion happening here, but it's missing tumor. That means there's a methylated site there, right? And then you can actually cut out this piece and then sequence it and then figure out where uh, where, where where this piece uh, belongs. This is actually how people identified the majority of tumor suppressor genes, right? So this is a promoter of tumor suppressor gene is methylated. You can find it out this way, right? So this is actually how most of the tumor suppressor genes are identified. You know, they're not actually functionally um, validated. Most of the tumor suppressor genes in the database that we see don't, do not have functional uh, 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 study. They, they are, they're identified through this pattern, <laughs> okay? Okay. So in modern genomics, modern bioinformatics, we're really just taking the old biochemistry, old molecular biology scale up. So I'm gonna quickly go over four types of technologies for DNA methylation, enrichment-based, restriction enzyme-based, bisulfate-based, and the future sort of a direct long reads, direct reading-based, right? So first, uh, enrichment-based. This is actually very, very simple, right? So this is just like ChIP-seq, except easier because you don't even handle chromatin, you handle genomic DNA, which is much more steady, uh, stable than chromatin, right? So here you rely on enzymes that, uh, or antibodies that recognize methylated cytosine, right? For example, antibodies uh, uh, rec recognize this cytosine and you use, um, you know, uh, you do a chromatin, uh, basically you do a immunoprecipitation, right? Take the genome, sonicate, use antibody to pull down methylated pieces and you can sequence them, right? So the representative technology is a medap seq that uses an antibody and the MBD seq, this actually uses a methyl binding protein uh, and then pull that binding protein down uh, to, to enrich for methylated region. So if you get that data and then put it on a genome browser, they just look like a typical chip seq data, right? So this represents methylated regions, right? So here is one gene, promoter, CBG island. Uh, if you look at the methylated regions of the MEDAP data, you see those little peaks representing methylated fragments, right? So this is a genome-wide approach, uh, but the resolution is kind of low. You, you put down fragments, but you don't necessarily, look, uh, don't necessarily know which exact CBG is, uh, is uh, methylated, okay? You can also take advantage of restriction enzyme, right? Just like the first experiment I mentioned, rather than running a 2D job, you can sequence them, right? So that's what, uh, be, what's behind this called, so-called MRE or methylation restriction enzyme uh, based method, right? So again, 
you have unmesylated uh, cytosine in the restriction enzyme recognition site and a mesylated cytosine. In this case, HPA2 recognizes CCGG, but it only cuts when the middle CG is unmesylated, right? So you're going to cut here, but not here. And then you can sequence now the end of these sites. Now you know precisely where the unmesylated CBGs are located, right? So this is um, MRE seq, right? Uh, so typically uh, you can plot this type of data on a genome browser and then see this little ticks represents the number of cuts happening on those specific unmesylated CBGs, right? So you can see, aha, uh -huh, promoters are unmesylated, right? And the, this is a, a three prime a CPG island that's partially mesylated, right? So these two types of data are sort of a complementary to each other. One enriched for mesylated region, the other enriches for unmesylated region, right? So you can also use, the limit here is like recognition site, right? So not all CPGs are within recognition site of a restriction enzyme. So you can use multiple enzymes to over increase this, uh, this coverage, right? So this is also a typical, um, technology. But the gold standard, right, the gold standard is by sulfate sequencing, right? So, um, so the two methods I told you earlier are enrichment based, which means it does not tell you the absolute level of mesylation. You get the relative uh, enrichment. But by sulfate sequencing gives you the absolute level. It's a digital uh, readout, right? So by sulfate is a treatment that can turn unmesylated cytosine into Eurocell, right? So in this process, mesylated cytosine is protected, so it's not being converted. But unmesylated cytosine uh, got converted into Eurocell at a very high efficiency, like usually 99.5% per, um, of the time, right? So when you sequence this, this, uh, this cytosine uh, will show up, this Eurocell shows up as a T, right? So when you see a T, your interpretation is, aha, uh -huh, that cytosine uh, was uh, unmesylated. But if you see a C, you know that cytosine is unmesylated. So you get this digital out output of mesylation uh, level. So all the unmesylated cytosines are being converted, not just in the CG context, right? So there are a lot of Cs not in CG context. They are actually also getting converted as a result. Your 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 D, your your library, you know, the library that you sequence, or in the end, your reads are are depleted of Cs, right? So they're they're uh, so they create some um, trouble in biometrics like mapping, right? Uh, but those problems have long been solved, right? So typically, uh, there there are multiple uh, packages out there. So this is a typical uh, pipeline for analyzing whole genome by sulfate data. I believe you might have a homework on this. Um, so you align your rates to the to the genome, and then just count the regions where C and T has got uh, C and T ratios, right? So then can you can figure out the mesylation level going from hundred percent mesylated to zero percent uh, mesylated, right? So uh, so um, you know, and then, then you can do your differential mesylation analysis and so on and so forth. So many uh, packages have been developed uh, to uh, to complete this uh, process. So whole genome bisulfate is a gold standard, but it's not without limitation. One of the key limitation is you have to sequence the genome many, many times, right? In order to get this, uh, this ratio, right? Uh, the, st the, the standard is usually you have to sequence the genome like 10 times, 20 times, up to 30 times to have an accurate uh, mesylation call. So as a result, it's pretty expensive, right? So you have to, every time you do this, you're resequencing genome. We also already know that CBGs are, you know, not evenly distributed in the genome. There are regions where CBG densities are high, regions CBG densities are low, right? When you do a whole genome by sulfate sequencing, you're, you're, you're sequencing everything. As a result, you can look at your own data, but 70% of your reads don't even have CBG on, uh, in them. Right? So you're actually wasting a ton of data uh, and money uh, with this type of, uh, with this approach. So one way to, um, uh, to combat this is uh, through a, 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 a protocol called reduced representation um, by sulfate sequencing. You're still doing by sulfate sequencing, 
but you try to enrich regions where there are a lot of CPGs, right? So what you do is you digest your genome using enzymes that recognize high CG content um, uh, uh, motifs like MSP1 recognize CCGG, right? So you get this fragment and you only select a specific range of fragment size, right? So these regions with low CPG density get thrown out and you focus on regions with high CPG density. Uh, these are usually the uh, CPG island and promoters. So as a result, you don't sequence the whole genome, but you sequence a fraction of the genome, uh, but your per CPG cost is gonna be much, much better, right? So this is uh, the advantage of uh, reduced representation uh, by sulfate sequencing. So uh, further, you can further reduce that uh, by using arrays, right? So um, uh, Illumina actually made, um, you know, arrays uh, for methylation. Uh, the concept behind this is, it's just, it's actually genotyping, right? So think about this. Now you converted your cytosine into T versus not as a function of methylation, right? So you can genotype the specific cytosine, right? If you know what CPG you want to look, look at, you can use an array to genotype it, right? So that's precisely uh, what people did with this infinium uh, array, right? So you, you interrogate the very specific CPGs you want to know. You simply ask, is it a C or a T? And then you can get at the methylation level, right? So this is a very common, commonly used approach. The advantage here is um, it's very reproducible, right? And you know exactly what CBG you look at. The disadvantage is you only know what CBGs that you interrogate, right? So uh, there has been like four generations uh, already. The first generation is even smaller than this. I think it's like 1.5 thousand. And then there's this 25, uh, 27 thousand array, 450K array is the most uh, uh, widely used one. Most of the data in the public domain are this 450K array data. Uh, recently, people switched to 850K array to get an even better uh, coverage. But how many CBGs are there in the human genome? Uh, there are 28 million, right? So you're not getting all of them with this uh, array. The other thing is, you know, so far commercially, just human array is available. Uh, they've made a mouse array. Um, you know, it took years, but finally they made one. I think it's going to become available uh, very soon, if not already, right? But again, if you have a new species or interesting species you want to go after, um, you know, you don't have an array, right? So you, 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 you go for whole genome by sulfate or RBS or other uh, technologies. So finally, uh, I'm gonna wrap up uh, and then just tell you the, the newest technology uh, that's out there, right? And we have a lot of hope uh, to directly read out modified base. You don't be enriched, you don't modify, you don't change, you just read it out, right? And that relies on uh, the current third generation sequencing technology being even better, right? So the two dominant force in the field is PetBio, uh, SmartSeq and NanoPort, right? In fact, 12 years ago, when PacBio just started getting into the market, they already said, hey, you know, we should be able to read out uh, modified base directly, right? Uh, so PacBio uses this, um, um, you know, uh, this uh, measures this ki kinetics of um, uh, DNA polymerase incorporation, right? So when the base is mod modified, this kinet kinetics changes a little bit, right? So they, they wanted to capture that, right? So they've been working on this for over a decade, but the quality has always been suboptimal, right? Um, until recently, right? So this paper, I think just came out maybe a month ago. That kind of, I, my prediction is it's gonna change the game, right? So they used a neural network to train not a single base anymore, but a window of bases to improve the, the, uh, the accuracy of uh, calling modified base, mesolated cytosine, right? So, um, you know, finally now after 12 years, I think, you know, they're now probably in real business to be able to read out DNA methylation uh, directly, right? So that, that means long reads and DNA methylation, you know, it can get better than that, right? So nanopore sequencing came a little bit later than PacBio, but in terms of DNA methylation, they actually did better, at least in the past uh, a few years. Um, so they, you know, uh, this DNA strand goes through this nanopore 
And depending on the size of the base, you can measure the change of uh, electricity, right? And then you measure the change of this current to figure out what basis uh, 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 it is, right? And then the modified base have a different size. So that's how you tell that apart. The, the reason that they are doing better, I think, is because they already use this window-based approach to call a uh, base, right? Not a base at a time, but a window at a time. So the same base actually got caught uh, multiple times um, you know, in the same neighborhood. So that gives uh, higher uh, accuracy. In fact, last year, uh, this uh, telomere to telomere um, a genome paper, uh, and now they have a second paper in bioarchive um, already uh, uh, have data on this uh, nanopore based DNA isolation estimate for some interesting like Central America region. So this is a this is a super exciting uh, direction, um, you know, because those regions not only we don't know their DNA isolation, we don't even know how those sequences look like, right? So now we have long range technology that allows us to you know go through this you know hard to measure regions and then uh, be able to also reveal their epigenetic pattern or their gene methylation pattern. Okay, uh, just finally to wrap up, uh, I want to introduce you to the, some of the resources out there. Um, we built, we helped build the uh, human reference epigenome. So this is a collection of data uh, from the Roadmap Epigenomics Project, uh, which ended a few years ago, but other consortium projects like International Human Epigenome Consortium, ENCODE, 40N, Target, all these projects are continuing adding data to the collection, right? So uh, we built a genome browser and we are now hosting over 200,000 genome-wide uh, epigenomics data now, including DNA methylation, histone modification, and many different uh, data sets. So there is a, a resource like this, and there are indeed many resources where you can get this data for free and then just uh, you know have fun. And the last resource I want to uh, mention is this upcoming resource, right? So this is the new, a new project, Human Pan Genome Project. Uh, so this is a project where we're reinventing the human reference genome. Um, the reference genome everyone uses a map data tool. Uh, it's very useful, but has its own limitation. Uh, it has places missing and it's also you know, whose genome is it, right? So it's actually nobody's genome. It, it, it does not represent the uh, uh, human diversity. So uh, a couple of years ago, this new consortium got started, uh, you know, to build a new uh, um, uh, human reference genome that incorporate more diversity, uh, have better representation. So this is an ongoing project. And we are also epigenetically annotate uh, these uh, new uh, genome uh, references. So there are a lot of uh, uh, upcoming resources for those who are uh, interested in. I think that wraps up um, everything I have prepared. I'm gonna go ahead and then stop uh, sharing here, uh, stop the recording here.